the vertical ascent, a meditative journey into light and sound. Dedication to James Bean, historian extraordinaire. I am a bubble of the supermost consciousness. In the process of evolution, I appeared or manifested. Similarly, you also appeared. I did not exist before, and I won't exist again. Only one element will remain from which this bubble came into existence. Baba Fakir Chand, 1886 to 1981. The one common denominator amongst those who are on a spiritual quest, be they Hindu, Muslim, Jain, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Sikh or Taoist, is that each utilizes practices that focus the mind. While the goals may be different and the techniques may vary, all aspirants are repositioning their attention to that which they believe is of ultimate importance. As such, they are on a vertical ascent away from the merely mundane. Keep your eye fixed on the way to the top, but don't forget to look right in front of you. The last step depends on the first. Don't think you're there just because you see the summit. Watch your footing, be sure of the next step, but don't let that distract you from the highest goal. The first step depends on the last. Veni Dalmau, Mount Analog. In Zen, a monk in a secluded enclave contemplates the koan given to him by his master. What is the color of the wind? In Tibetan Buddhism, a lama near a mountain peak silently repeats the sacred words Om Mani Padme Hum as he aligns himself with Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of compassion. A Christian monk repeats the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, over and over again, imagining his Saviour in his devotional heart. A Muslim Sufi sitting on his prayer circle performs Zekra, beautiful names of the sacred, in remembrance of Allah. An elderly Sikh quietly recites Guru Nanak's Sri Japji Sahib, adjacent to the Sri Hamandir Sahib Golden Temple in Amritsar in the Punjab. A Roman Catholic nun says her rosary and remembers the suffering and compassion of her beloved saviour. A Hindu woman recites a mantra that her guru gave to her as she focuses on the image of Krishna. A Jain holy man inside a temple dedicated to Mahavira utters the holy Navka mantra. A Taoist priest in a hidden garden ruminates over a passage of the Tao Te Ching. A female astronomer is lost in thought as she contemplates the night sky resplendent with stars. The Inner Voyage, tracing the inner light and sound to its primordial source. Our consciousness streams out in the world through our five senses, and from this process, we interact with all that we can see, touch, smell, hear and feel. But mystics, from both East and West, reverse this innate tendency by taking their attention from the outside and placing it within. Theirs is a quest to understand the nature of consciousness itself. The distinctive characteristic of Surat Shabd Yoga is its emphasis on listening to the inner sound current, known variously as Shabd, Nad, or audible life stream. The Sufi mystic Mullah Shah referred to this esoteric practice as Sultan al-Azkar. 
It is through this union of awareness with the primordial music of life of the universe that the practice derives its name, Surat, attention, Shabd, sound current, Yoga, union. Pythagoras imagined that all of matter was made of vibratory music. Hence, masters of this path emphasize a threefold method designed to still the mind and vacate the body. Simran, repetition of name or names. Daihan, contemplation of inner light or radiant forms. And Bhajan, listening to the inner sound current. As Dr. Julian Johnson explains, in due time, if the process is complete, the individual spirit current or substance is slowly withdrawn from the body. First, from the lower extremities which become feelingless, and then from the rest of the body. The process is identical with that which takes place at the time of death, only this is voluntary, while that of death is involuntary. The body remains in the position in which he left it, quite senseless, but unharmed by the process. He is now in a world he never saw before. The pattern is quite clear. Clarity increases steadily the more one ascends, not vice versa. Ken Wilber has beautifully described this spectrum of consciousness as having a definite hierarchical structure, with the higher orders subsuming and transcending their lower counterparts. Our common language expresses in a graphically simple way the process of awareness. We fall asleep. We wake up. In yoga psychology, the farther down one's consciousness descends, the deeper the sleep or unconscious state. The further up it ascends, the higher the awareness, superconscious. The following account, primarily based upon Shiv Dayal Singh's inner journey as described in his Sarbakhan, is filled with rich mythological characterizations, metaphors and illustrations. Let the literalist be forewarned. The First Inner Region Sahas Dal Kanwal Entering the portal of the Astral Plane You will see the Akash in which is located Sahas Dal Kanwal, the thousand petals of which perform the various functions pertaining to the three worlds. The sound current is likened to a tinkling bell and later a conch. The presiding demiurge of this realm, Niranjan. I will give you the secret of the path, a few hints concerning it. First, fix your mind and soul upon Tisratil. Gather together mind and soul again and again and bring them inside. Then behold a window and beyond that an open maidan or field. Concentrate the attention upon that and hold it there. You will see a five-colored flower garden and inside of that behold the jyoti, radiant flame of light. Enjoy this scene for some days, then see the blue-coloured sky appearing like a chakra, circular disc. Impelled by love and longing, pierce through this. Then gaze at the jyoti with detached mind, hear the unending bell sound, and become absorbed in it. Next you will hear the conch. Let yourself become saturated with it. Just before the first region, Near the entrance to this region, at Ashdal Kanwal, the student first meets the radiant form of the Master. From here on, they make the journey together. The Second Inner Region Trikuti, the three prominences. Now, my dear companion, prepare to enter the second stage. Behold Trikuti, the abode of the Guru, where the sound of Onkar is heard perpetually resounding. 
The sound current is likened to a Murray Dangham, or primordial drum. The presiding demiurge of this realm, Onkar. Then you go up and open a gate and enter Bunknar, the crooked tunnel, passing on to the other end of it. Then you cross high and low hills. Now the vision appears to be reversed, and one sees, as if from the opposite side of the veil, which he has penetrated. Looking upward, he passes into a fort-like region, which he enters and becomes master of it. He reigns there as lord of that region. Here the soul becomes adorned with the attributes of devotion and faith. Here the seed of all karma is burned, destroyed. You will see thick dark clouds, from which peals of thunder constantly resound. When rising above these dark clouds, behold, the entire sphere is red, with the beautiful red sun in the center, imparting its color to everything. Here you will see the red four-petaled lotus spoken of by the saints, the details and colors becoming visible as one comes nearer to it. Here the bell and conch sounds are left behind, and the sound of Mardan, like a drum, is heard. After that, the soul resumes its upward journey. Now comes the sound of a huge drum beaten incessantly. Here the soul has grasped the primal current from which all creation emanates. Innumerable suns and moons are seen here, and many kinds of skies filled with stars. He sees and traverses deserts and mountains and gardens. In the gardens are flowers arranged in artistic designs and groups everywhere. Canals and rivulets of transparent water are flowing in abundance. Then one approaches an ocean, which he crosses by means of a bridge. He then beholds the three mountains or prominences called Mer, Suma, and Kailash. From these the region is named. After this, he passes on to a region of the most unalloyed delight. The third inner region, Daswadwa, the tenth door. Now the soul goes on up and opens the third veil, and hears the voice of the sun region. This is Daswandwa, with very brilliant light. The Akash of Sahansdal Kanwa and Gagan of Trikuti have been left behind. The sound current is likened to a Sarangi, the presiding demiurge of this realm, Rarankar. The soul here bathes in Mansarova and joins the group of Hansas, swans. The soul then circles about and rises to the top of sun, and there hears the kingri and sarangi, stringed instruments, something like the guitar. After hearing this sound, one penetrates and crosses Tribeni, a place where three streams meet, there entering the vestibule of Mahasan, where he picks up the secret knowledge. This great sphere alone is 70 palangs in circumference, and in this sphere there is at first pitch darkness. Four sound currents are heard emanating from invisible sources, the music varying, every minute changing in tone. The sound of the Rarankar predominates and is indescribable in mortal language. One hears them and is entranced by their sweetness. Here are five egg-shaped regions or worlds, all full of a variety of creations, and each is permeated and governed by a Brahm. Each has its own predominating color, like green or yellow or even white. They are quite vast in extent, in comparison with which the entire universe below Trikuti appears very insignificant. We traverse almost measureless space, and approach the fourth region. The 
the fourth inner region, Banwa Gufa, the Whirling Cave. Cross the pass above the Hasni Tunnel and enter the Rukmini Tunnel, where you will see a strange and beautiful mark or structure. The presiding demiurge of this realm, Sohang. The sound current is likened to a flute. On the right side there are bright islands, and on the left many continents covered with palaces, with their spheres of other temples and worlds. I then saw the Banwa Gufa mountain approaching, which I heard the Sohang Shard. The sound emanating from there is like a keen flute. Kabir Sahib also refers to 88,000 island continents, all with magnificent palaces of sparkling light. Here the soul beholds the sun above with immense light. The region is most beautiful and sweet and full of light. The souls there live on the sound current as their food. The fifth inner region. Sakh Khand, the true realm. In the fifth region there is a fort-like palace wherein is situated the throne of the King of Kings. The sound current is likened to a vena. The presiding demiurge of this realm, Sat Purush. The soul now advances to a great and wonderful field or park, the scenery of which is absolutely indescribable. There is also a great reservoir, from below which flow abundant streams of the most delicious nectar. And this nectar flows out through large canals to supply distant regions. Golden palaces are set in open fields of silvery light, but the landscape is indescribable, and the beauty of the Hansas living there is incomprehensible, the brilliancy of each one being equal to the combined light of sixteen suns and moons. The soul then passes on up to the real entrance. The watchers by the gate are the Hansas. Here, the Sahaj Surat asks the soul, How have you managed to reach this region? The newcomer replies, I came across a saint, and he gave me knowledge of this region. Saying this, the soul then pushes on and enjoys the darshan of Satnam, and rejoices with an exceeding great joy. A voice then emanates from within the lotus, saying, Who are you? And what purpose or object brings you here? He answers, I met the Satguru, and he gave me full instructions. Through his kindness, I now have the privilege of your darshan. From this darshan, the soul derives immense pleasure. Satpurush then speaks of the mysteries of Alak Lok, and with his own powers and love, he aids the soul to make further advance towards the still higher regions. The soul has now seen the three regions above Sakh Khand and the ruling Purush in each one. Radhaswami Dham is boundless, infinite, endless and immeasurable. It is the Nij Stan, the special resting place of saints, fakirs. That region is the Ultima Thuli, of all sands, and all speech and description end here. The Ultimate Realization Anami Lok the nameless realm. In the ultimate realization, all the regions that one has traversed, from Sahans Dal Kamwal to Banwa Gufa, appear as but illusory dreams without a sustaining reality. They are but cascading simulations upon simulations without number. Just as in a dream when we wake up, all the landscapes and all the characters vanish, and a new world emerges that makes all that came before it appear vacuous. Even the most magnificent visions are but temporary, 
and void of permanence. An army lok is not an attainment as such, but rather a radical undoing, a letting go of all that is less than truth itself. The contracted bubble of consciousness realizes its prior nature and that it has always been part and parcel of the ocean of being which lives it. Shiv Dayal Singh, the founder of Radha Somi, realized that no words could suffice to explain the final moksha. So he ended with the words, wonder, 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 has assumed a form. According to adepts in the yoga of the sound current, the key is to follow the audible life stream to its terminal source and not be waylaid by any sidetracking and enchanting visions. Stay with the current. Although the sound current is one constant audible life stream, it has four major gradations. Anahad, unstruck. Sa, essential. Sat, true. And Nij, original. By following the light and sound, one is eventually led to the transcendent space which has neither. It is inexpressible. As the great sage Baba Fakir Chand realized, inquire into the subjective source that is seeing, hearing and experiencing. Who is that, that I am? That source is without name, without form, without restriction, without end. The Sound Current Tradition Glimpses from the World's Great Traditions The Yogin, being in the Siddhasana posture and practicing the Vaishnavi Mudra, should always hear the internal sound through the right ear. In the beginning of his practice, he hears many loud sounds. They gradually increase in pitch and are heard more and more subtly. At first, the sounds are like those proceeding from the ocean, clouds, kettle drum and cataracts. In the middle stage, those proceeding from mardala, a musical instrument, bell and horn. At the last stage, those proceeding from tinkling bells, flute, veena, a musical instrument and bees. Thus, he hears many such sounds, more and more subtle. Nadabindu Upanishad. The glorious consummation takes place when the Lord of the Five Melodies comes. The wondrous music of the Five Melodies, God Himself may make audible, if He so wisheth. Guru Nanak. Abstract sound is called Saut i Samad by the Sufis. All space is filled with it. The vibrations of this sound are too fine to be either audible or visible to the material ears or eyes. Hazrat in Ayat Khan. It is easiest to hear this sound when it is quiet, particularly at night time. Once you have identified this sound, then you place your awareness on it without wavering. Resting your mind in the sound, you continue to listen, going further and further into the sound itself. Dochen Ponlop Rinpoche. Therefore, when one of our members listens internally and expectantly for the divine sound with controlled body, mind and will, he will become lifted up towards the bliss and wisdom of the Supreme Being as soon as he hears the divine sound. Sahabji Maharaj There was born in on my perception a heavenly spiritual sound which pertains to the song of everlasting praise and the sweetness of the invisible melody. Invisible I call it because it can be neither known nor heard except by him to whom it is vouchsafed, and he must first be purified and separated from the world. For while I was sitting in the same chapel and chanting psalms at night before supper, as I could, I heard, as it were, the tinkling music of stringed instruments, or rather of singers over my head. Richard Roll Deep Silence the shrill of cicadas seeps into rocks. Matsuo Basho
God picks up the reed flute world and blows. Each note is a need coming through one of us, a passion, a longing pain. Rumi. Sound brings liberation and peace to all sentient beings who in their distress are calling for aid. Surangama Sutra. Let the inner ascent begin.